Again, this is a great meeting and I'm humbled and uh, honored to be here. I'll try to make it short because we are going to do like uh, rapid fire cases and discussion. And I'm going to share with you. Let's see if this is moving. These are my disclosures. And this is just a snapshot of five cases that presented to the CAT lab post-CPR. You can see the cardiac arrest that they had from ventricular arrhythmia, VF. You can see the lesion in the angiogram. What is common to all those cases that were done by Ryan Meder was that they underwent NIRS chemogram. And all of them had a high LCBI at four millimeter max. So you can see here that the range of the LCBI was from 400 to 883. Now, you can argue, well, this is at the context of the acute coronary syndrome. They all definitely had the lesion. But what do we do with this kind of patients? So this is a 33-year-old patient who presented to the lab with non-STEMI. The culprit lesion was at the distal RCA. It's a straightforward deletion. It was treated with PCI and a stent in the distal right. But part of the angiogram was the left system. And you can see here that there is some moderate disease in the LAD. Now, with a show of hands, how many of you will pursue here with any physiological study? Raise your hand. Nobody? One, two, three, four, five. I know some of the girls will do hear me no cow also, but there is no need because we had <laughs> already lesion. Okay, how many of you will do imaging of this vessel? We have few. All right, this uh, 33 years old, it's a very unusual to have someone at this age. There are definitely irregularities. So uh, he had chemogram. This is NIRS. And what you're seeing here, there's a lot of yellow here. And uh, this is a um, question, going to bring an event or not going to bring an event? We do know now results of two studies, the LRP and PROSPECT2, that were using NIRS in a very large cohort of registry. There are also small registries that show that if you have more than 400 uh, LCBI, you're also going to have a future event. This patient also underwent um, physiology, which I'll share with you in a second, but the key question was, look at the chemogram, will this lesion cause a site-specific event, not just overall event? Obviously, he does have an event on the right coronary. We don't have the LCBI there, but that was the non-STEMI. So um, what else do we look on the IVUS? We look in plug burden because we do know that patients with plug burden uh, and TICFA and LCBI are good correlates for a subsequent event. The MLA was 3.9 centimeters square. Uh, and again, the plaque burden is very suspicious now. Obviously, we're not treating any of those. But uh, my question to you, now that you know the LRP study results, you know the PROSPECT2 results, they all show that if you have high LCBI plaque burden, you have a likelihood to have overall event and even site-specific event. How many of you would treat this patient differently with a medical therapy? So this patient will get already statins, but would you give something more than the statins? I think so. I, th I think this is an unusual age to see this much disease. So I, I think there's something unusual going on. So I wouldn't jump into usual therapy just yet. I, I would have treated the right and get your data and then try to figure out what exactly is this problem and is this, you know, an injectable cholesterol lowering agent kind of situation. I agree. So no, no FFR here or IFR? Well, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, okay. Uh, I, I'm going to show you the pathology that you would expect to see when you have LR lipid rich plaque and you know that approximately 85% of those plaques causing sudden death and have a lipid core or lipid pool. So we had the LRP study. Uh, you know about that study. I'm not going to go through much, but just show you the event rate. So the event rate on the patient level, if you have more than 413% versus 6%, and 
And in the plaque site level, it was 3.2% versus 0.8%. And the events were pretty serious. There was cardiac death, cardiac arrest, ACS, non-fatal MI, also PCI and cabbage. So going back to this patient, uh, I showed you all the information. Um, he came mm. with came new back. onset angina 15 months later. Uh, 15 months. Yeah, his uh, physiology, I don't have it on those slides, was normal. So mm. there was no physiology abnormality. The FFR was more than uh, 0 0.90. But you can see here, new onset of angina. This is 15 months later in the same vessel. Yeah. So this is the baseline. And this is 15 months later. And I think this case speaks for itself. Again, another study, Prospect 2, shows overall event. Look at the non-culpit lesion-related MACE, 8%. That's pretty significant within four years. And then when you put head-to-head -head the two studies, the LRP and Prospect 2, you see that the event rate miraculously almost the same, 13% in LRP, 12.1% in Prospect 2. And on the site level or lesion level, it was 5.4% at four years in Prospect 2 and 3.2% in LRP. And another uh, sub-analysis that was done by Akiko was the higher the LCBI, the more event you will have. So my take on this, and I'm not gonna show you more cases because I think we are short of time, mm. is that we have to pay attention to the non-culprit lesion because mm -hmm. these are the lesions that may cause you the mortality and the spontaneous MI. While we heard all day long that all the lesions that are being treated, which are culprit, at the most will reduce some angina and they're not reduce mortality. So again, we do need a very large study, but something has to be addressed here. And the question would be, how do you treat those patients? What do you do for them? So there is a study that was done by Lawrence Raber that shows that PCSK9 at two years reduced the LRP. And I think at least we know that as a surrogate, this will reduce it. As a relate to this patient, you have to measure the LP little a, and you have to be cautious on the opening lecture that was today, a fantastic lecture by Dr. Fusser as usual. Um, would you treat that with a bioresorbable scaffold? Uh, I'm not sure. Here's a case from Prospect 2 that was actually uh, looking on FFR that was 0.90, plug burden 81%, uh, and you can see here that if you treat the BVS, uh, you had a much larger scaffold area compared to if you treat that alone. Uh, and bottom line, again, we do need some study to show that um, you're going to have less events if you're going to put a BVS like in this case versus other cases that you're just going to go with medical therapy because all those patients in prospect and LRP were treated optimally medically. So we can identify the vulnerable plaque. We have different modalities, imaging modalities. It can be done by OCT, NIRS, and also even with RF IVOS. And I think we have to pay attention to these non-culprit lesions and then to start to embark on studies which would be tell us how to treat those findings. Uh, right now, we have many medical therapy. But uh, if you look at the next generation DES, their event rate at two years is less than 3.2%. So you ask yourself, if I stent, if there is a single lesion only in one spot, is stenting gonna be reasonable? It may be, rather than to leave it to the medical therapy. And I'll stop here, thank you. Yeah, thank you, that was beautiful, Ron.